Hi and welcome back. So a new study out of the University of California has shown a clear link between accelerated epigenetic aging and the chances of reaching the ripe old age of 90. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and see what this new study out of the University of California has got to offer. This is a review of a study that was published by the University of California in San Diego, which shows a clear link between accelerated epigenetic aging and the chances of reaching the ripe old age of 90. And there's a link in the description below to the JAMA site where this study was published. In this first of a kind study of 1,813 older women, it is suggested that the accelerated biological aging of the body and epigenetic age acceleration specifically is associated with lower odds of living to be 90 years of age and also being physically mobile and having intact mental function. And although conducted only in women, I believe that the same outcome could also be attributed to men. In the July 2022 online edition of the JAMA Open Network, a multi-institutional team of researchers led by the Herbert Wertheim School of Public Health and Human Longevity Science at the University of California, San Diego, reported that epigenetic age acceleration could be used as a biomarker for healthy longevity and to estimate functional and cognitive aging. Professor Andrea Lacroix of the Herbert Wertheim School said, Older people know well that age is just a number that may not be indicative of their health status. What if we had a way to measure how fast we were aging that could predict our odds of living a long and healthy life? In aging research, we call this an individual's health span. So what is chronological age and what is biological age? Chronological age is based on a person's birth date, or as David Sinclair puts it, the number of times the Earth has gone around our sun. Not really a relevant health marker when it comes to our health. Epigenetic age refers to the biological age of a person's cells, tissues and organ systems. If an individual's epigenetic age is greater than their chronological age, the person is undergoing epigenetic age acceleration, which is associated with the higher risk of cancer, cardiovascular disease, Parkinson's disease, and other age-related diseases such as sarcopenia. Based on four different epigenetic clocks, and these measure biological age, the findings were every five to eight years of epigenetic age acceleration was associated with 20% to 32% lower odds of living to the age of 90. We know this as our longevity and with intact mobility and cognitive function. And we know this as our health span. Dr. Lacroix went on to say, health span is important because the number of individuals who will live to be 90 years and older will quadruple from 1.9 million in 2016 to 7.6 million in 2050, and that is just in the United States alone. Right, let's take a look at the cohort, and also let's look at the study details. As part of the prospective study, the team analyzed data on physical and cognitive status from 1,813 women who participated in the Women's Health Initiative. This is a long-term national health study funded by the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute that began in 1993. So a study that to date has lasted over 29 years. The median age of death among Women's Heart Initiative participants was 90 years. The study participants were aged between 70 and 72, and that's at baseline. And they were followed until at least the age of 90 or for the time of their death. The associations of the epigenetic age acceleration and healthy longevity were found to be independent of other characteristics more common among longer lived women with intact mobility and memory compared to those who did not survive to the age of 90, including being Caucasian, 
having no or fewer chronic conditions at baseline, having a higher education, not smoking, and walking multiple times per week. Let's now take a look at the results among this cohort. 464 women survived to the age of 90 with intact mobility and cognitive function. 420 lived to the age of 90, but without intact mobility or cognitive function. And 929 women died before reaching the age of 90. First author, Perva Jane, PhD, who completed this work as part of her doctoral dissertation at UC San Diego said, prior studies have shown that epigenetic age acceleration is associated with increased risk of death. And a few studies observed that slower age acceleration occurs among longer lived individuals. But this is the first study to prospectively examine the relationship between slower age acceleration and living to the age of 90 with preserved mobility and memory. Dr. Jane went on to say, furthermore, our study suggests that we can use epigenetic age acceleration to estimate the risk of an individual not attaining healthy longevity, which could lead to future public health interventions to counteract poor health outcomes among older populations. So how can you measure your epigenetic age? To date, there are still three main ways it can be done. A DNA methylation test. Some people still call this the Horvath clock. This will require a DNA sample to be taken from something like a saliva swab or a blood sample. There's also the online test. And for this, you will need to have a blood test that records the markers you need for that specific test. Now, these first two come at financial cost, but there is a 100% free option, although this is not as accurate as the first two. And these are online questionnaires. These age tests ask a number of questions about your lifestyle, including exercise regimes, sleep duration, alcohol intake, smoking status, stress levels, quality of diet, etc. So DNA methylation test, the most accurate, you can now take these tests at home. There are many companies that now offer this service, but it's important to check how many DNA markers each company tests against. The more markers, the more accurate your epigenetic age result. There are companies such as Chronomics that test against millions of markers, and these are accurate to within one year. And there are companies like epiage.com that measure against less than 20 individual markers and can be as far out as five to 10 years. I would avoid this company and any company that isn't measuring against at least hundreds of thousands of markers. Do not age.org use chronomics as their age test. And this is accurate to within one year. And if you use the code MyNMN at the checkout, you can get 10% off the price of the do not age.org epigenetic age test. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Let's say you've taken a DNA age test and your epigenetic age is older than your chronological age. What can you do to put that right? I've got three things that will not cost you any money, no need for expensive supplements. The first thing is to eat a whole food diet. Now this can be vegan, or this can be carnivore, or it can be somewhere in between. The key is to stop eating processed foods. The second is to exercise regularly, and quite a few studies that I've covered on the channel now show that a step count of around 4,000 a day gives you longevity benefits, and try to build into that exercise some kind of resistance training to fight off conditions such as sarcopenia. The next thing is sleep, and I've done a couple of videos on sleep. Sleep between seven and eight hours a night, and studies have shown that you should try to fall asleep between 10 and 12, and not after 12, and not before nine. And these studies have shown the greatest effect on longevity. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing your comments in the comment section below. Please take care. As always, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.